left. Dot with the serve. Trailing 7-2. Lewis, oh yeah, he got right by Whitmarsh. Interesting blocking strategy by Whitmarsh and Dodd. I talked to him last week. Whitmarsh goes up and either takes angle or line. He's going to take to one, yeah, and yeah. Mike Dodd has the ability to freelance. He can go wherever he wants. He doesn't take one or two. He just reads the play, and uh, he's certainly one of the great players of all time in terms of reading the play. Boy, they have a lot of trouble passing that ball, and it's going to be another point. So point for Beef Louie. Lewis wanted a double contact. And so far in our semifinal, Beef Louie having a time of it. They lead it eight to two. Michael, Michael showed them. To find what you desire requires a volleyball tour for 1995. Chris Marlowe, Paul Sunderland, glad to be with you from Boston, Massachusetts. The Miller Lite Cup offering $1 million this year. It's the closest cup, the most exciting cup. You look at the top six guys, and there's, there's room for interchangeability. Well, all in striking distance. We're about two-thirds of the way through the season so far. Karch Kirai still on top, $1 million dollars overall, $125,000 if Kirai should stay on top. But there's going to be some real changes. Bullion and Lewis are going to move up. And Gino, who has really struggled the last couple of weeks, is going to be moving way down Ken there. Ken Steffes has the... been dropping like a stone in the cup also. Sure, sure, of course. He's only played in a couple of tournaments so far this year. Two serving eight. The story has been Brian Lewis is serving. Bill Bouillon has also played well, but the wind is really blowing now. Flags are flapping. Sunday's hair is moving. And it's eight to three. Dodd Whitmarsh, they're going to get back into this match. Got to do it right now on the good side. They just mauled their way, their first trip through the good side. Your hair is moving. Well, so what? <laughs> it's windy, you know. Yours isn't. <laughs> you carved it out pretty well this morning. That's right. And Bullion taps it into the bottom of the net. So Lewis and Bullion, who were leading 7-1, to one, find it tightening up just a bit. And the big wit is uh, certainly an imposing blocker, and you have to make a good shot to get by him. He's got a little bandage on the top of his right knee. Did, did you see? Last week in Minneapolis, I was talking to him about it. He was wearing a neoprene brace on that earlier, and uh, hurt it there, and then went into one of the railroad ties to complicate matters, bruised it up a little bit. Brian Lewis, part of the opposition in this match, knows all about uh, hitting a railroad tie. Missed a couple of tournaments. My God, having a little fun with uh, our boom camera at the end of the court. Hey, Mike, that's your buddy. When you make that's your right. big comebacks like at Seal and elsewhere, that's right. that camera's your buddy. You gotta make friends with the cameraman. That's where all your bonuses come from. Don't forget that. Eight to four, Lewis and Bouillon by four. And Lewis pounds it through. Brian Lewis uh, once told me he loves to go to the supermarket because there he can stare down on people when he's in the waiting line. Louis uh, just 6-1. Of course, he plays with Bill Bouillon. They call him Beef Louie. What would it be if he was playing with someone that was 5'10"? Shrimp Louie. <laughs> oh, Shrimp Louie would be you, the team. You had a lot of time on your hands in the hospital, didn't you? I, I can I tell. A lot of time. <laughs> Three days. Three days of uh, hanging out in the Minnesota Medical Hospital. Look at Mike Dodd. You know, you would think that he'd be uptight here. He and his partner, Mike Whitmarsh, are playing crummy. They're losing. But he's staying loose. He's messing around with our cameraman and trying to stay positive. Yep. Knows that anything can happen, particularly in these conditions. You know, don't get stressed out. Stay loose, and hopefully, Lewis and Bullion make a couple of mistakes and help get back into this match. Whitmarsh got the kill, 8-4. Beef Louie have the lead. Karch Karai and uh, Scott Akatebi have been playing pretty well today. Although in their semifinal against Adam Johnson and Jose Loyola, they were down six to nothing. And I think they ended up winning 15 to nine. So they made a tremendous comeback. Working on Bullion, and Bullion pounds it. Well, Karch was talking about that match uh, to me earlier in the day, and they got behind five nothing. And yep. when AJ and Loyola are serving the ball well, they're they can be untouchable. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, AJ and Loyola out of the tournament this week in fifth position after making four straight finals with two victories. So Brian Lewis to serve, 6.16 to go. Oodles of time and a four-point lead. Working on big wit. And Whitmarsh. Boy, it almost looked like he open-handed that dink, but he got it down. Well, again, Mike Dodd likes to set the ball low to his partner, and particularly in these windy conditions. And this ball, you can see the flags flapping up there in the top of your screen, and that ball just blew back over Whitmarsh's head. 
It's a good thing he's 6'7". Mike Dodd with 67 career wins, 54 with Hovland, 9 with Whitmarsh. Go, go, and Dodd go. is there. Nice and poke with the jam. Whitmarsh has gotten rid of the neoprene brace. He's running around quick as a cat right now. And emotionally, mentally, they've really changed things up in this game. They were flat as, as a Swedish pancake at the beginning of this game and have turned it up here a little bit. A little whipped cream on this one. Boom. Five, eight now as Dodd will serve. Lives in Manhattan Beach, California. Check it. 6.04 to go in the game. Three point lead. And Lou, oh, can't get there. So the ball served perfectly into the husband and wife area. Lewis and Bouillon fighting over into it. Into that territory. Mike Dodd is really good. Watch the trajectory of this serve. This is way over the heads of Bouillon and Lewis and right onto the back line. Mike Dodd is going to do the same thing. Toss this ball high and just try to spin it into the prevailing wind. Tournament seeds, Dodd and Whitmarsh, number one, Akatubi, Karai, Johnson, Loyola. They finished fifth, Bouillon, Louis. Fenor, Moana, Ludis had a poor tournament. What, they finished 13th? They finished 13th. They Bohoff, Hydra, Tanner Welch, and Canyon Seaman, and Jeff Rogers. I want to tell you about Randy Stokos. He is still out of action. I spoke with his wife, Carrie, this week, and uh, he was... Uh, Really effective by the uh, the uh, problems that his mother had, uh, and uh, so we expect Randy to be back next week at Hermosa Beach. And he's going to be playing with Brooke Vandeway, and then his wife told me, yeah, and then his wife told me he will be back on the AVP tour as God puts it away. Talk more about that when we come back from a commercial. But Randy Stoke was not here this week, along with Hovland and Steffes. So Mike Don and Mike Whitmarsh are coming on. They trail now just by one, eight, seven. Here in Boston, Massachusetts, semi-final action. Bullion and Lewis leading by a point over Dodd and Whitmarsh. However, they were leading seven to one. As Dodd and Whitmarsh have come back, Bullion and Lewis have kind of gone into the tank here. And Dodd with a dig, chance for another point over to Witt. And Bullion is up high. Big play there to save a point. Mike Dodd with a long, long run, trying to get back involved in the cover play off the soft block. He tried to set his partner, Mike Whitmarsh, 50-50. Dodd right now, he's thinking, get this ball right up near the net, just a little bit too far. Bullion with the soft block, and Dodd just too far to go to cover. Bill Bullion and a 20-second timeout taken by Dodd and Whitmarsh. All right, we saw it for a moment. The $100,000 Great Texas Shootout is coming up Sunday, September 17th. Paul and I will be there. That will be live on Prime Sports on all the regionals at the same time. It's kind of, I think it's an experiment, isn't it? Well, Give away like $100,000, <laughs> winner take all, fly us in there and have it live. And Austin, Texas. That is, is, an, nice that is an experiment. I like it. It's going to be an exciting event. A lot of players are interested in how they may or may not be chosen to qualify yes. for that event. Still arguing about that or discussing it, I should say. Right over to Lewis and Lewis with the tap down. So Beef Louie finally gets a point. On that great Texas shootout, it says the two best teams on the beach. But how do you figure that out? Is that individual wins? Is that wins together? What about Kent Steffes and Karai? What about Akatubi and Karai? What about Sunderland and Karai? Who does Karai play with? I mean, gee, he's got about 10 guys. Nine to seven is our score. Nice up and out of the reach. Bouillon was there for a moment. And the side out to Dodd and Whitmarsh. Of course, Dodd and Whitmarsh have won four times this year on the AVP Tour. Karch is uh, leading that. Karch has got one, two, three, He's got three, eight, four, including five, the indoor six, events. Seven, yeah, eight total. But I think they're just counting the outdoor events for the shootout, are they not, Paul? Who knows? Okay. <laughs> Bouillon blocked by Whitmarsh! Oh, well, Whitmarsh was up low that time, and he still got it. Only Whitmarsh's second stuff block, but he's starting to get his hands on a lot of balls. Remember the long run by Mike Dodd didn't lead to a score. This is where Bullion has really got to get tough. He's got to listen to Brian Lewis, who sets him perfectly virtually every time, sets the ball plenty high enough for Bullion to get an effective and smart good call. Now, we're just talking about the outdoor season. Karai with seven, Akatubi with five, Dodd, Whitmarsh, Johnson, Steffes, and Loyola. That's including the one indoor win. 
Did Karski get one indoors? Yeah, that would make eight. So very, very equal this year. If you're wondering about Kent Steffes, he's not going to play next week in Hermosa Beach. I think he's going to get a medical waiver so he does not have to play there. He told me that he will be back either the week after for Milwaukee or almost for sure in Seal Beach. Of course, the big question is, who's Kent Stepp is going to play with? As Bouillon goes down the line, if I were to stick with Akatebi, Stepp is might end up with Randy Stoklos. Well, I, I think that would be a very formidable team. Yes. And, if they uh, can get along. They're well, not, they're they not the best of friends, but that was hey, some business, time ago. Business is business. Yeah. Uh, Stephus wants to get back out here and prove to everybody and himself and, and his former yeah. partner, Karch Kirai. He can't be an announcer forever. <laughs> you can't, only, can't you be an announcer forever? <laughs> you only go on vacation once every five years. Your wife is so mad at you. You ready to tear your head off? If I didn't go this time, if I didn't go, if, let's just put it this way: if I didn't go this year, I would have suffered dire consequences. <laughs> Almost a fantastic play out of the net here. Bouillon going. Wow, where is it? Couldn't quite dig it up. 9-8. Bullion and Lewis hanging on by a point. Plenty of time. Boy, the points have been scored very quickly. Well, it's the windy conditions once again. Whitmarsh. And I'll tell you, Mike Whitmarsh gets rid of the neoprene sleeve on his knee. Not that it has anything to do with his ability to get out of the sand. And all of a sudden, he's really starting to take control of this match. And he makes such big moves. Young blockers out there, either indoors or on the beach, watch Mike Whitmarsh. You don't just put your hands up and move them around. You make big moves blocking. An 8-2 to two scoring run, and Bullion having a lot of trouble. Wow, he just got the outside corner of that line. Bullion considered a very, very good all-around player. Hits well, serves well, passes well, sets well. If he has a concern, it's his blocking. He told me, I want to get better as a blocker. I need to block more balls. If I can do that, we can really do well. I tell you, he and Lewis, you know, talking about uh, Loyola and uh, Adam Johnson, I mean, they are a great serving team, especially in the win. Yep. When they're not Aren't missing they? a ton. Yeah. Here comes Bill Bullion, scoring from the good side once again. Yeah. And we talked about it. Anything could happen in these windy conditions. Dot and Whitmarsh were horrible at the beginning of this game. They fought their way back into it. That's like an old husband and wife play. They didn't even move. They didn't even talk. <laughs> they didn't care about it. They didn't care about getting it back together. 10-9. Here comes Dot. Oh, and it's poked up, it's going out. So a nice hustle play, 10-9 is our score. And Mike Whitmarsh will serve. I mentioned how great a basketball player Mike Whitmarsh was at one time. He told me he doesn't play basketball anymore. Just doesn't have time for it, not really into it. Probably However, doesn't want to get hurt. Yes. <laughs> However, he says he still could beat uh, Mike Dodd, who played at San Diego State in the game of horse. Dodd, of course, uh, a good basketball player at San Diego State, drafted by the Clippers, which tells you what happened to his career. <laughs> In the crapper. Well, the, the, Clippers, the Clippers will win an NBA championship sometime before I die. I'd say by, the, by the time you go to Sweden next time. Here's Whitmarsh. Whitmarsh with the big glass. Well, they got, Joe, they got Joe Smith in the draft, right? No. Who am I thinking of? You're thinking of Golden State. You see what Whitmarsh has done at the net. Those are his stuff blocks, but he's also touched a few, which have made some points. Bullion and Lewis, no stuffs. Nine serving ten, and Don Whitmarsh just uh, waiting and hoping to get a point and go back on the good side. Dodd, nice dig, little alligator shot. Back over to Louie, and Louie, dinky. Uh, Whitmarsh looked a little tentative that time when he landed. I wonder if that knee's really bothering him. I know he banged it quite hard you know, last that, week. He looked a little awkward coming down. That ball almost landed in Witt's pocket. I saw that. It was, however, his back pocket. I saw that happen in a golf magazine. They were talking about this guy who hit a shot in a tournament, and it hit a tree, and it ended up in his pocket. It bounced off the tree and hit into his body. <laughs> is, that, is that an unplayable lie? <laughs> he got a he got a, uh, a, a, a drop. <laughs> Some kind of a drop. Bouillon with the ace. So Bill Bouillon, after they'd given up uh, eight out of ten points, they scored two in a row. Beef is serving well when we come back. Player digs. Those guys are not too bad, are they, Cindy? They got you right perfect for that. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm the best-looking announcer on the beach. You always tell me that. 
Well, there's only two of us. <laughs> you could have a point there. 11-9 as beef Louie. Louie with a dig. They're up by two. After having a big lead evaporate. A little joust into net. Louie got it! A chance to score and the conversion from the bad side. That's big for Louie and Bullion. Dodd and Witten now down by three. Cranking hard cross court. I'll tell you, Brian Lewis may only be six foot one, but he can turn in the air, he can hit away from his body and really moves the ball around well. A seven to one lead Beef Louie had. Then Beef Louie were leading eight to seven as Dodd and Whitmarsh fought back. They tied it up at nine. Two big serves by Bullion. They were 11 to nine. And at that point, they were 12 to nine. And that's where we stand right now. Karch Karai and Scott Akatebi trying to stay warm in the players' tent, uh, getting ready for whoever wins this. The team that wins this should not be tired. It's gone very, very fast. And very cool temperatures yes. today. In spite of the fact that it was uh, really quite glorious this morning, it was uh, probably in the low 70s Beautiful. at best in terms of a high temperature. We've dropped off significantly since then. Whitmarsh with the jump serve, working on Bullion. And Dodd can't get there. Normally the play that Dodd makes with the left hand. Right, he was just a little bit late. Hanging on the cross-court cut from Bill Bullion. Had to give him a little respect on the cut shot. Watch Mike Dodd. He'll appear in the left lower corner of your screen. See, his first step was to the right. Yeah. He was anticipating the cut shot, and then that made it late, him going all the way down the line. Bullion's got a pretty good cut shot, so you have to honor it. As Brian Lewis uh, sets the serve. Down the line, ace. Yeah. Bill Bullion did not serve the jumper from the bad side, but Brian Lewis, hey, no such hesitancy. He just tees it up and whips. What's Louis Brian got Brian Lewis now with three aces. And he's got a couple of winners that bounced yeah. over He's got a couple Bullion. of rebound winners. Yeah. Look at that, beating Mike Dodd down the line. And Dodd now, like the third baseman in extra innings, way over protecting the line. Good adjustment by Dodd. Not a bad idea. Make him serve him down the hubby wife area. Absolutely. Make him serve someplace else. Clock's going. Clock's going. So Dodd will serve, and the clock is running inadvertently. The clock was running, so they're going to have to put some time back. 411. And they're going to put it back up to 411. That sounds like a little high to me. Wow, it was, must have been running for a long yes. time. Yeah. Through three or four rallies. the ball. Greg Krause making the call. 4.12 on the clock. 4.12 they're going to put on the clock. So Greg Krause making the call. Of course, that is the referee's prerogative. Cold, blustery day in Boston, Massachusetts. There's Krause, first referee, John Featherstone down below. On the lines, George Carey and Jim Leonard. Dodd with the serve. Boy, they need some points bad. They're on the good side. They're not getting any. Bullion, Dodd, right in the pocket. And Dodd's dig out of bounds. Good for a side out. So Bill Bullion, I asked him to evaluate his year, and he said it's been bittersweet. We haven't been lower than fifth, but I'm disappointed we have not been in the finals. They may get their wish today, just two points away. Yeah, Marsh, Lewis almost. Did a lot of fake blocking against Mike Whitmarsh. The wind, of course, coming more strongly from his side. He's having a little bit more difficulty tracking even those very low sets from, from Mike Dodd, making him possibly take his eye off the ball a little bit. A lot of fake blocking against him. Lewis, great set. And Whitmarsh has it up. Chance for a point. Can Dodd squirm it out? He does. Excellent play by Mike Whitmarsh. Huge block at the net, really piking into the cross court, tracks this down. Good teamwork and communication. I'll tell you, Dodd did not exactly rocket that thing, but you see Bill Bullion going left and he chops it off right. Timeout call by Beef Louie. This is a $100,000 tournament. And of course, if you follow Pro Beach Volleyball here on Prime, you know it's split 20, 11, 4, 9, 30, 71, 30. 5,700, all the way down to 25th, 500 bucks. 25th place. Let's give you some of the other finishers. We've got a moment. So you have that handy ball? I'm getting it as you speak. Yeah. Okay. 
Once again, Eric Fanomoana, Ricky Ludies, who are a highly regarded team, they went down to 13th. They lost earlier in the tournament to Dane Bland and Ian Clark, who are playing extremely well. And Troy Tanner and Wes Welch continue to struggle a little bit. You know, they're, they're better than a ninth every week, but that's where they've been finishing. How about Doug Faust and Craig Moothart? There's a name I haven't even seen Moot in about a year. They, they had got a ninth. Well, and that's who beat Troy Tanner and Wes Welch the round before the quarters. We'll give you those a little bit later. We'll just uh, feed you some tidbits here. Whitmarsh with the serve, 10-13. Chris Marlowe, Paul Sunderland with you, and Bouillon. I'll tell you, Lewis uh, is having a lot of success against Whitmarsh. He's got a quick arm, fakes one way, goes another way. You know, Paul, you were talking about Brian Lewis as being the best setter on the beach. Do you remember back to the 1994 Clearwater when yes. Lewis was called for the most <laughs> expensive throw in the history of volleyball? a throw that cost his team $82,000. The winner of the Cuervo at that time got $100,000. The loser got $18,000. The throw was on point match as Louis taps it down the middle for another point. But in essence, that $82,000 throw called on Louis, and he still to this day says, hey, that was not a throw. It was a throw on yeah. a very tough chance, an aggressive move by Brian Lewis. And you know who passed that ball? Mike Whitmarsh. Mike Whitmarsh, who Lewis was playing with at the time. But now, Louis with a chance to move into the finals for the first time this year. First game point. Work on his old partner, Witty. And this could be it. Lewis, yes. Oh, and beef. Went the wrong way on the T-bone shot. Yeah, but they've already assured themselves of the 14-11 side change going over to the good side. Lewis and Bullion got to be feeling very, very confident right now. Phenomenal Great save. Up. Great up by Brian Lewis. Brian Lewis has improved his defense. As a little guy, he was considered a good defensive player, but he really wasn't a very good defensive player early in his career. He's really worked on it, I think. Yeah, I, I Just because he was little, everybody says he's got to be good on defense. Well, and he, he makes, a, a, I think, a real fundamental mistake. When the ball's being hit, oftentimes he's on the move. Yeah. And you can't dig a ball that's hit to you when you're running in another direction. you got to look at that set. Wow. I know what you're saying. And Brian Lewis, someone said, oh, what was that? And Lewis said, that was perfect. Louis going, that's perfect. That was He's staring down the crowd saying, that was perfect. <laughs> perfect nectar. Hear no evil, see no evil. Second game point for Beef Lewis. Working on Woody. Let's see if they fake block. Nope. And Whitmarsh pounds it through. Let's check the bullion blocking stats as we Still. talked about. Ready to serve. Any blocks? No, still no nothing. Stops. Okay, puts an awful lot of pressure on their side out game and also having to score points from the service line. That's a good serve down the line from Whitmarsh. It's 14 to 10. Dodd Whitmarsh trying to hang on here. Should get a point here. Dodd's pretty cagey on the left. They'll run the little pump one. Bye-bye. So they get the 14 to 11 change. A great semifinal as Dodd and Whitmarsh trying to hold off Beef Louie. Can they do it? We'll find out. Stay with us. Massachusetts, the site of this week's AVP Tour event, the Miller Lite Open. Chris Marlowe and Paul Sunderland, yes, the team back in action. Uh, Marlowe injured last week, a little illness, and Sunderland on uh, vacation in Sweden. But uh, here we are at the tent in Boston. Good crowd on hand as Bill Bouillon and Brian Lewis have a 14 to 11 lead. They've had two game points so far. Dodd and Whitmarsh have trailed all the way. One tie at nine, but Beef Louie have outplayed him. And now Beef Louie on the good side. Dodd, great dig. Whitmarsh, dig! Out of the net. And Louie keeps it alive. This is for a point, if I remember correctly. Here comes Dodd. Put it away. Hey, Dodd and Whitmarsh are playing better on the bad side. Well, and I'm not sure why. I, well, they're playing better when they're able to receive serve a little bit, uh, when they're not getting aced phenomenal play once again by Brian Lewis. He almost saves this play and then Dodd Whitmarsh come through with the crucial, crucial conversion and putting some pressure on Lewis and Bullion on the smart 20 second timeout to think about things just for a second. Dodd with a big kill again from the left side. Hard cross court for the score. So Dodd and Whitmarsh trailing 14 to 11 with just under three minutes to go in the game. For, uh, check that, 14 to 12 with that point. Remember a couple weeks ago, we told you that Mike Dodd uh, made a hole-in-one to win a Lexus automobile over the summer. 
an interesting conversation with him this week. He told me he got the Lexus and was sitting in his in his house and he decided, well, I'm going to sell it, get some money for my daughter's education. So he sold it to a man who came up to the house with $42,500 in a brown paper bag. <laughs> in cash. I, I guess you don't have to ask for ID when you're selling somebody a car, you know. It's a buyer yeah. beware, I guess, you know. My God. Wow, yeah. what a great story. Yeah. Third game point as Louie right under our camera get in there tighter get that ear oh, there's dodd all right game point louis as the bell tolls will it toll for dodd and whitmarsh on this play maybe not yet dodd yes nice shot by dodd dodd whitmarsh looks pretty confident in that ball you know they have the most karma of any yeah. team on the beach they don't feel pressure they play as hard as they possibly can each and every week and they look at it as a marathon as the whole season and they don't put all their eggs in one basket on a particular uh, tournament 12 serving 14 here comes Lewis and Lewis taps it over Whitmarsh so Brian Lewis uh, gives his team one more chance the fourth game point coming up last time Bill Bullion had the ball in this area on this side he served an ace so he's tied off and back. That's kind of an interesting way to wear your... Uh, well, it's real windy, top. and he yeah. just doesn't want that tank top flopping around too yeah. much and causing a net violation. Whitmarsh very close to the left sideline. Working on Dodd for the game. Dodd's off the net, and Bullion can do it right here. And he does. Dodd thought it was a throw by Lewis. It was not Lewis's best set. But nonetheless, beef Louie into the final for the first time this year. Oh, yeah. And they deserve it. Oh, they played very, very well all season long. Just can't get over the hump. But now they have gotten into the finals with a chance to win. And Mike Dodd talking to Greg Krause a little bit about that game point. Are you man enough to do an interview with them? Pardon me? Are you man enough to get down Pardon there me? and get one? Get Pardon down there. <laughs> Pardon me? Time out called. We'll see if Sonny can get down to the beach before the day is over after this. <laughs>